Um, um, yeah. So, I mean, feel free to, uh, to jump in, even if we're recording, I think it's perfectly fine. It, it, it's a big difference maker for, for people who can't make it. And I mean, hopefully people who can make it do come cause, um, it's a lot better. You know, when people aren't here, usually I just post a previous recording. Um, so that way okay. I'm not sitting here talking to myself, but <laughs> anyways, um, <laughs> Anyways, week one. Um, first of all, welcome. Um, like I said, I'd like to do some housekeeping first. Um, this is CIT 225 database design and development. I usually always get it backwards. Um, but what we're going to be doing in this course, you know, just to kind of summarize it, is we we learn how to write SQL um, and we learn a little bit about database design, just kind of like how it works, um, best practice. And then we also just kind of learn how to write C SQL. Um, it's really, a, it's a good class. Um, I feel like it really tons of different, I feel like no matter what you're doing in the kind of technology data world, um, it's something that's really important, even in the business world. Um, so a little background on me, I guess, good segue. I am in the field of data analytics. Um, so I've been, been doing it for a little while now. Um, I'm actually pretty heavy on the business side. Um, but but also a lot of the technical. Um, so I I actually manage the analytics for the company where I'm at and um, do a ton on the business and accounting side or financial side, um, as well as on the, you know, in the trenches, so to speak. Um, but originally I was at Oracle, um, so got a lot of experience with database and um, all a lot of things technical there. Um, I consider myself to be a full stack developer. Um, I have a few apps on the app store. I, and it's just what I'd like to do for fun here and there, or used to do for fun before I, you know, when I had time. Um, I know website design, Flask, uh, Python, API stuff. Um, I'm a huge proponent of Python. Um, so all those kinds of things. So anyways, uh, but enough about that. So I, I feel like this course is really good for, for just about anyone, whether you're planning on, you know, being a developer, um, going into business, um, all sorts of things. The reality is, is everybody uses data now. And um, if anything, even if you never touch a database, I think it's super important to just have data design concepts because um, organization and, and it just makes a lot of sense. Um, and I, I hope by the end, like it, that clicks for everybody They're like, wow, you know, like, um, just being able to think through data is uh, is really important. Um, so anyways, week one, that's kind of the objective of the class. I let me I guess before we dive into week one topic, um, I'd like to go over just a few housekeeping items, how I like to run my class. So, um, you know, I like to run my class just like I do like my employees at work or, you know, any job. Um, you know, I I'm perfectly reasonable. If something's going to be late, you know, just let me know. Um, like, you know, it happens every term. If you can't imagine being here at BYU, Idaho, um, someone's going to get married at some point. And, uh, um, you know, like if you know, your wedding's coming up or you're, you're, you know, due at some point, you know, just let me know. Um, and, and we can work it out, you know, not a big deal at all. Um, my, my only objective is to teach you guys, you know, this stuff about databases. Um, I'm not really big on, like structure and all that, um, you know, like my goal is just to, to teach you so you can do it. Um, that, that's my one goal. Um, and so however we can do that and make you guys successful, I'm on board with, um, you know, just, yeah, like I said, my only ask is like, we just be professional about it. Um, the Teams chat. Um, I've noticed that some people have been popping in Teams. There's already been some communication going on there. So I, I love that. Um, I like that. It's a little bit more instantaneous. Um, I have an easier time responding to those. Um, then I do like the inbox on Canvas and stuff like that. So um, would highly recommend Teams. I highly recommend like, you know, ping me if you have any questions or if you get stuck. Um, TA's on here. Um, TA, do you want to introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, uh, I'm happy to be part of this course as the TA for CIT 225. Uh, a little bit of that of me, it's uh, I'm a business analytics major. Uh, this is my last semester. I'll be graduating this semester. Um, I love sports. I love running, exercising a lot. I love SQL. And yeah, uh, I hope everyone will have a great experience learning SQL. And I'm here to help you guys. 
whenever you guys need help related to SQL, related to the course, I'll be sending out my contact info throughout the announcement section, uh, my email and my phone number. So feel free, feel free to reach out and I'll be looking at those messages really quick. And yeah, I'm here to support you guys and have a great experience throughout the course. Thank you. Yeah. And, and do we pronounce your name Caesar? Caesar. That's right. Perfect. Great. I'm well, glad to have you. Um, so anyways, yeah. Um, Caesar's already on teams. I saw him pop up. So if you have any questions, like ping us, put it in the team's chat. Uh, what I've noticed a lot of times in the past is, um, you know, a lot of people will ask a question and the students themselves will answer it. So to me, like it just kind of facilitates like this. I mean, especially it was harder to describe before, but I feel like since COVID, we all kind of know kind of how this works. Um, I feel like it just fosters like a more kind of like in-person type atmosphere. Um, at least one that mimics, gets a lot of the benefits of an in-person atmosphere without obviously having to be in person. Um, so anyways, I really enjoy that about it because you can just get answers more quickly. Um, trying to think any more housekeeping. Oh, um, while we're here, um, the, the ebook is free for the course. Um, so you can, you can find the ebook, um, within the, let's say start here. Um, I think it's in one of these textbook information. I believe it's right here. You can, you can get a free copy. Um, this is a little weird. Um, so when you come here and I'm going to open this in a new tab, just so everyone's familiar. Cause I, we hit this every, every term and I'll be honest, I kind of forget what, what actually happens. So we'll say, uh, um, institution not listed. That's what we say. Institution not listed. And then what you'll do is you'll click before you type it in here, you'll click already a user. And then once you click already a user, then you'll go through the process. A lot of people miss that step. They'll just punch in their email address. This is where you kind of start. Um, anyways, it doesn't really say that in here. Um, but anyways, so you'll, you'll, you'll get it and then you should all be, be set to go. Cause I think they kind of pre-make your accounts. So then once you sign in here, you should have access to just a ton of books. Um, and one of those is this learning SQL book. Um, so that one you should be able to access for free. Um, if you want a copy, um, you know, feel free. You can buy it for pretty cheap on, on Amazon or whatever, but, but yeah, you can get the digital for free. The digital is nice cause you can search it and the quizzes in the course our open book. So, you know, you can search for things, um, which is nice or at least fast link to them. Um, and on that note, um, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to kind of go over kind of general um, what the weeks look like. And I'm going to skip to week three because week one has all this extra stuff um, that you guys know about being online students. Week two, it's one little different thing. And then so, so, but, but same, same structure throughout. So each week, what we're going to have, in fact, I'm going to go week four. Each week, what we're going to have is there's going to be some preparation and reading. Um, there's going to be some exercises. There's going to be a quiz and there's going to be what we call paper. Um, and really the paper is kind of like a self-reported project, um, if you will. Um, we'll, we're going to talk a little bit about the paper, um, but in fact, we'll go into each one of these. It does have a discussion. Um, I'll be honest, we've never used them. Um, I, like I said, I like teams for that kind of thing. And so this is not required by any means. Um, the, you know, I, I consider teams and c communication during this meeting to be kind of fill that role, um, inside this, uh, prep and reading, actually, let's go back to week one. We might as well look at this week's stuff while we're, while we're here. Um, so preparation reading. So if we take a look at this, um, you'll notice that there is a bunch of reading assignments. Um, the way I would look at this is this is not something that you need to like read. Um, I would read the book. So th this is kind of how I would approach this and how I always recommend it. I would say, read the book. Um, you know, that's important. And I guess, sorry, I'm going to back up one. So what I would do at the beginning of each week is I would actually go straight into um, the paper. Um, I think the paper is going to kind of give you the best kind of sense of what the typical overall goal of the week is. Um, so for example, purpose, learn how to install, configure, and use the MySQL database with the command line interface tool. 
that is, you know, the purpose. And then you can kind of read the study. And the reason I would read the, the, the instructions here is because in that way, as you go throughout the week, you can already, you know, if, if you're really being efficient, you could start pulling out or typing up some things to put in your paper as you go along. Um, and, you know, screenshots, uh, things you try, all that kind of stuff, because that's ultimately what it's going to be is, um, you know, I tell students this all the time, like as far like really, you're just trying to show evidence that, you know, whatever it is you learn that week. That's, that's what the paper does, but not on rails. Like it's very open ended um, for any given week. I can have two students go two different directions. And that's that's a wonderful thing. I like it. Um, the only thing is, is just like any essay and, and it doesn't have to be in any particular format either. I've had students do it in HTML. Um, it can just be in a doc. Um, you know, you take your pick, it, uh, no structural format whatsoever. Um, like I said, I just care that there's evidence there to support that you like, you know, explored it really. And that's why I like it. It, um, in fact, I did my master's. Oh, it's been years ago now, but one of the things that I really like about this, because they, they, this was a new addition to the course about a, a year and a half ago, two years ago, um, and it really kind of mimics uh, more of like a master's type program where it's not very structured. Like I said, it's kind of off rails, um, but I like it. It actually gets your mind going instead of just kind of like ticking boxes, you're, you're actually thinking through it, um, you know, and it's all laid out about what the requirements are. And like I said, three to five paragraph with pictures or code samples or stuff like is amazing. Um, you'll, you'll have no problems with it. Um, so that's what I would do. I'd start with the paper. It'll give you a sense of what you're going to do and also what you need. Um, so like for this week, and sorry, I just clicked off of it. Um, for this week, you know, okay, we're going to install, configure, and use MySQL. Cool. Um, that's kind of the overarching. And then it, it kind of gives it as a case study. You can just write about it, but it says um, you should return a report with a three to five paragraph report that clearly explains explains why using the MySQL command line shell presents advantages that translate to pro productivity and the difference between using an IDE and the CLI. And then the paper should qualify what you learned by experimenting with the technology. So really, um, we're going to learn about the difference between an IDE and the command line. And IDE stands for integrated development something um and you'll you'll hear me reference this acronym to a gui graphical user interface it means that it has buttons and things to click on and it's interactive versus command line interface is our terminal um you know no mouse text only that sort of thing um so you can see here basically it's saying hey what's the advantages of using the command line and then what's the difference between the ide and the cli um, so anyways, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but now that we kind of know what the paper's about, now we can start to dive through some of this other stuff. And like I said, in prep and reading, I would say definitely read the chapter of the book or the chapters. I think this one has two. Yeah, this one has two chapters. And then, then the rest of this, so I would read the book and all these little websites though, I... I wouldn't consider an assignment. I'd say, Hey, it's bonus. Right. So I would read the book. And then like, if I have questions or, you know, something just doesn't feel right, especially as I'm looking through this, like, Oh, what is my sequel? Hey, if that kind of like, you know, we all kind of get that. If that kind of rings that like, Oh, what is my sequel? You know, you should probably click on it. Um, or like, Hey, there's videos on how to install, use the command line interface. Um, and, to be honest, your mileage may vary with some of those depending on your operating system and whatnot. Um, but then, you know, down here, um, you know, there's just more. So anyways, tons of stuff here, like how to install Sequila database, um, how to create users and sign privileges. Um, so if you ever have like questions or anything like that, you can always click on those, but I would say you, you don't need to sit there and like read through them all. Okay. Um, any questions about just class structure in general before I move on to the weekly content? Okay, you gonna take that as a good sign. Um, so anyways, the weekly content. Um, basically this week, the goal is to get you installed up and running 
and just kind of orient it. Um, I know how it is. You guys got a million different things going on. Um, so, so that's why I say that's kind of the, the goal this week. Um, nothing too crazy. You kind of just get back into the flow of things um, and to get you set up. And so on that note, um, installing MySQL, I kind of put my own spin on the instructions in the announcements um, just so in case people kind of get stuck. Um, so what I like to do is go here and say, okay, you know, go to this download because it can get a little weird. And uh, when you go to download, um, it's going to ask you for a username and pass, or it's going to ask you to create an account. There's a little button where you can say, skip it. Um, I can't remember if this link has already passed that point or not. Um, but anyways, you can, you can skip it if you need. Um, but anyways, this is where you go to download it. You can choose your operating system. It should automatically kind of pick one and then, then away you go. Um, All right. And then, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about MySQL, what it is, and the tools we're going to be using. So um, in this class, we use MySQL. And you're going to hear a lot of these like SQL type things. Um, so I'm just going to give kind of like a brief overview. So SQL is a language, essentially. Um, it stands for Structured Query Language. And it was originally designed to be accessible to business people. Like whoever made it was super... Um, it's super like, uh, what's the word? They gave business people a lot of credibility, I guess, because they thought they could do this by themselves. Um, anyway, so they, they did, they developed it to try to be like super intuitive, um, which to be honest, like it, it, it is more so than a lot of others because the, the very limited syntax, I mean, it serves one purpose and that's to, to get, to deal with data. Um, and there's lots of different products that kind of choose to use SQL as their flavor um, that all kind of run databases. So a couple, so MySQL, obviously the one we're using in this class, it's open source, um, but it is owned by Oracle. Like, you know, you'll notice when we go to the download page, you'll see the Oracle copy right down here. Um, so Oracle owns MySQL technically. Um, it is open source, meaning that the code's open source, but Oracle's the one that maintains those repos. Um, and then there's another popular one, Oracle, um, is kind of like the OG of databases. So they kind of started it all. They are not open source and it costs a lot of money. Um, and then another one, probably the, the most popular one that I've seen kind of like out there in the world is a uh, Microsoft SQL Server, um, naturally owned by Microsoft. It is not open source um, and it costs money as well. So usually you pay for licenses on both Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server. Um, so MySQL is really popular, obviously, because it's free open source. Um, but actually, my favorite database of choice is actually Postgres. Um, and I only mention it because, like I said, it is my favorite. So um, Postgres is my favorite. It's a little elephant icon. I like it because it's very feature rich. So um, again, not bagging on Oracle or anything, but you know, they probably don't have a lot of incentive to make MySQL as good as their paid product. And that is actually the case, surprise, surprise. Um, and so that's why lots of people are actually um, moving to Postgres more and more and more all the time because it's a very feature rich um, system and it's open source and free. Um, so anyways, but the, the amazing thing about all these is that they all use SQL. So in the class, we're going to learn on MySQL, but the skills that you're going to learn can be widely applied to any SQL database system um, that's out there. Um, and like I said, we mentioned a bunch of them. I know there's a few offshoots like MariaDB and a um, bunch of these different ones, but um, those are the main ones. So MySQL, Postgres are the free open source ones. And then you have Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server. Um, I'm sure I'm missing some. But those are the SQL relational databases that are pretty popular. You'll hear about some other database systems that are flat file like MongoDB. Um, we're not dealing with those in this class. So not all databases are equal. Um, we are just dealing with the SQL flavor variants of them, which are probably the most popular.
Okay, that's another uh, thing down. So now let's talk about the tools. Um, so anyways, um, we're going to be using MySQL Workbench. And this is where a lot of people get, um, I like to make this distinction up front to save some embarrassment. Um, so we use Microsoft, um, or sorry, we use MySQL Workbench. And, and MySQL Workbench is just the tool that connects to the actual database. Um, so I always like to show this. So MySQL itself is actually just a um, a daemon that runs in the background of your computer. It's not something we really can interact with with mouse and keyboard and that sort of thing. Like it's not an application we open, but rather a service that runs that runs in the background. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open this and show you. Um, so once on a Mac, once you install MySQL. I actually have mine set up so it doesn't start automatically. I actually have to start it. So this is actually the the only little way that I can actually interact with MySQL. So if you go, if you're on a Mac, you go to system settings and you actually have to start MySQL. Um, and it's going to make me plug in a password. And there we go. So now it's up and running. So, I mean, as far as like MySQL goes, if you have that option, I just have it so it doesn't sit there and run all the time. Um, but because I have many, and so I, I pick and choose what I want to run at any given time. It's not going to use a ton. Of, it doesn't use hardly anything, especially if you're not doing anything with it. But it is. It's just a server running locally on our computers. So we actually are kind of running a miniature server service on our uh, on our local computers is the way this works. And then MySQL Workbench, like I said, is just a connection. So we could actually use MySQL Workbench to connect to a hundred different databases, whether they're here on our local computer or on an Amazon cloud or something similar. So it's just a tool to connect to the to the service. And you know, this will walk, it'll walk you through it in the instructions. But you know, we can set this up um, where we just connect. So Basically, because we're running it locally here on our computer, it assumes that. And so you can just kind of give it a name and say, okay. And then when you installed MySQL, it should have had you set a password. This is where you'll, you know, put it in there essentially. Um, so like, for example, this is my setup. Um, and I have a couple different ones because I remade one for every time I'd show it. So this time I'm just going to show you how to edit it. But same thing, so you can kind of see my my config here. We can do test connection. It's gonna ask me for a password. Um, I can punch that in and you'll see that it failed. And it's probably because I put in the, the, wrong, the wrong password here. So let me try again. There we go. And now you can see sec well, we were successful and we're all good. Um, and then once we're ready, um, this is where I'm going to split things in two different directions to kind of like go into our topic here and I'll try to hurry because I know we're, we're already at the 30 minute mark. So um, inside here, you know, once we have our connection, I can just first I'm going to right click on this and you'll notice there's an option that says start command line client. This is the easiest way to open um, the command line, in my opinion, because it, it just kind of does it for you. Um, otherwise, you'd kind of have to put things in the path and all that kind of fun stuff that's not really that much fun. Um, so anyways, I like to just do that method. Um, it makes it easy. Um, no need to reinvent the wheel there. So I'm just going to put mine just like this for right now. In fact, I'm going to split it just a little bit more. So we're going we're gonna to show our little side-by-side -side comparison here. All right. And because uh, ultimately we're doing the same thing. So now I'm just going to double click on this and, and we're in. And let's uh, open a fresh one here. So once we're in here, this is where we can start kind of seeing the differences between some of these two things. So if I'm, I'm here, um, you'll notice over here on the left, each one of these little things is actually a database. Now yours from the beginning, it won't have these vehicle things. It'll just have Sakila. It'll have Sakila and Sis. Um, and just to show you the same thing over here, I'm going to do show databases. And you'll notice that we get a lot of the same kind of stuff. Now, the GUI is going to hide some of this, but you'll notice that we still have Sakila and Sys and the other things that are here. Um, I'm going to expand this. And I'm going to say, okay, I want to see tables. 
we'll see a bunch of tables here. And Sakila is the one we're going to be kind of using. It's kind of like a pre-made fake database. And we'll we'll go more into the individual data here in just a minute. But um, I'm going to show you the example here. Oh, so you'll see that I got no database selected. So first I have to say use Sakila. And now I can say show tables. And there we go. So you'll see that there's a lot of similarities going on here. And so from here, you know, I can explore like, hey, what columns are in here? Um, but more importantly, I can click, if I hover over here and I know it's hard to see, you can click this little uh, wrench button and you'll notice it kind of gives you what's called the schema. And the schema of this table is just, what are the columns and the data types? Um, so we can kind of see that all here and I'm gonna do it here. So we're looking at what is it, actor? I'm gonna describe DESC for short, actor. And you can see that we get a lot of the same data here. Um, you know, we can see the actor ID, the data type, um, and a couple other things that we'll talk about at a future date. Um, but the important thing is that to know is that these this is the schema and, and all it is is the table, right? And we've all seen spreadsheets before. Um, that's essentially what we're doing here is we're just kind of um, seeing kind of like the structure of this, of this Excel sheet, essentially. Now, the difference between this and an Excel sheet is databases are a lot more, um, they're not as flexible in the sense of, you know, an Excel sheet's kind of like just open cells where in a database, we define the structures themselves and adhere very strictly to that structure. And that may sound a little confusing, but we're gonna talk a little bit about it. So we're actually gonna look and see what's inside of this table. I'm sorry, I'm used to being sloppy and not, not a good example here. So I'm gonna select everything from actor. So this is like an example of a very simple select statement which we're, we're just getting all the data from, from the actor table. Um, and I guess I need to do the same thing here. So again, this is you're seeing some of these similarities. I'm going to say use Sakila because we, we have to use something first or select the database. So it knows what we're, what we're kind of dealing with. And then, um, then we'll run this. And so now you'll see that, you know, we, we get some results here. We can see the data and, and this is where, I'm actually kind of a proponent of, I like to have both open, the I'd and this, because to be honest, I kind of like the description here on the schemas. It makes it really nice just to kind of like really be able to quickly kind of see what's going on here. So you'll see the actor ID. So what we're seeing here in rows is, are actually columns when we, when we look at a schema. Um, so actor ID, and we can see that it's an int, integer, meaning number, Boom, and it's what we call primary key. So this is where we start to differ from, from like something like an Excel spreadsheet. So in databases, every table should have what's called a primary key. And that primary key is a unique identifier for every row in that table, meaning that there never can be more than one of the same value. Um, and so usually what these are, are they're just numbers that auto increment. So you can see right here, so this one's set up to auto increment, meaning that every time we put a new row in that table, it's just gonna count up. Now, if we delete something, there's gonna be a gap and that's okay because these numbers really don't mean anything aside from being an ID, just like you guys all have student IDs. You know, those are largely probably unique identifiers. They don't really mean anything other than the fact that, you know, it's the order in which you came. Um, <clears throat> And, you know, they probably recycle those, but these ones never get recycled. Um, they're usually, in, in fact, some of them aren't even numbers. They can be like long strings if they, you know, because to the point of data or to the, the point where there's just an absurd amount of data. Um, and so numbers even like become used. And so they've started using like what's called a GUID, um, which are even more options. But in this case, we're just gonna talk numbers. Um, that's how I like to keep it simple. Um, and we can do the same thing over here though too. Select everything from actor, hit our semicolon and boom. Um, and so what this does, just to talk you through this, not that it means much, but it's fun to explore. The asterisk just means we're selecting every column. Um, so it doesn't mean all the data 
It just means all the columns. Um, and we'll talk more about that in, in coming weeks as well. Um, but anyways, why these primary keys are important, and, and this is not something we need to know for this week, but I like to kind of just cue this up as a sneak preview. And those of you who have been in the CIT 111, I believe, is the, the course, the intro to databases, maybe you've already seen this. Um, but how I like to think about databases is it's it's a bunch of spreadsheets that can link to each other. Imagine each table having a link that you can click on that will take you somewhere else. Um, a good example of this is like, you know, like basically what Sakila is, it's a movie store, right? So what I'm going to do is, is let's do this. I'm going to say uh, um, describe customer over here. So I can describe customer. And I'm going to hit return a couple of times just to bump this up on the page so you guys can see a little bit better. Um, so I described customer and you can see we have a customer ID, store ID, first name, last name, email, a bunch of different kind of data. The key is that it only belongs to a customer. Um, but let's say that we wanted to see all the movies that this customer has rented, right? Um, there's a couple other tables in here. Um, you know, there's a rental table. So, you know, we can describe rental. And I like to think of this as like you're building like a web and you're connecting this stuff and you're finding ways to connect the data um, because that's kind of like, to me, that's kind of like the magic of the database is in its design, it, it becomes very efficient. And like, if you've done other programming, it's very object layered where, you know, you have to think about things like, so for example, a customer can have multiple rentals. And so, you know, the way we design that is obviously customer table has a customer ID. That's its primary key. That makes sense. Um, and then if we look in the rental table, you'll also notice that there's a customer ID. And so how we do this is we can say, okay, I'm going to select um, everything. Let's just do customer, left join, or on C. So what we can do is we can we can connect this data up um, and and then answer stuff in in a lot of different ways. We can slice and dice the data in in a million different ways. And uh, so like if I run this, you'll notice that we get um, multiple people many times. So you'll see that Mary Smith is listed tons of times. and then um, but what the difference is we can see all the different rental IDs that she's she's ever done, right? And we can see the same thing across all these people. So what we end up with is all the times that this person has rented a movie um, and some of the data is duplicated and that's because it exists multiple times in the, in the rental table. This is essentially how we connect these two, right? We can see all the rentals and we can see who's the person that, that had that rental. And we tie that up through what's, you know, the the primary key connects to what's called a foreign key. So those are two big important words. And if you can understand those concepts, this class is going to be a breeze for you. Um, but primary key is what it sounds like. It's the primary key for that table. And then if we have a foreign key, foreign keys are the only duplicative data in a database if everything's perfect. Right. That's the only foreign keys are the only example where, hey, you know, I'm going to have to store this data twice. And that's simply to link up these two tables. But that's how we do it. Um, and anyways, I don't want to go too much deeper, but essentially that's that's what databases are. Is there are a bunch of tables with links that form business logic is what's crazy. What we're going to start to learn next week is that the way in which we design these tables basically the columns that we put in and the primary and foreign key combinations, the way in which we set those up determines how the data works, right? It determines whether we're, um, you know, how many puppies can this store sell essentially, you know, um, business logic um, all starts with database design. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else big we should cover this week. I don't think that's, I think that's it. 
Um, so anyways, I'm going to pause there. Uh, again, this is not what we need to know now. Your your first example is just to play with a few things between the GUI, graphical user interface, um, you know, explore the tables just like we did. Like, oh, what kind of data is in address? Um, you know, and I like to highlight how this data connects because then you can start making some connections like, oh, um, uh, an address, who does that belong to? Oh, it doesn't have a customer. Like, I, you know, here's a great example. I don't have a customer in an address, right? I don't see a customer ID or anything like that. But if I go into customer, I can see, oh, it has an address ID. So addresses can be tied to customers or customers can be tied to one address, right? But what the downside, and this is where I like to get in this business logic, the problem with this design is that a customer can only have one address, right? They can't have more than one address. They can only have one address. But if we look in the store table, we'll also notice that it has an address ID. And so what's nice is that, you know, you can, all your addresses live in one central unit and that's because, hey, whether it's a store address or a customer address, it doesn't matter. It's an address. And what makes it one or the other is who we link it to. Um, so you kind of share one box across multiple things. Um, anyways, so we're going to talk more about design next week. But um, like I said, you can kind of explore some of those connections. Um, I would say you should play a little bit with this. So like if I was writing the paper, you know, I would do what I just did. Try try to explore things in both um, and kind of get a feel for it. And just to go over a couple of these um, examples again, um, the first thing you're going to want to do is say use Sequila. You may have to do that also over here, just like I did, use Sequila. Um, same, same process over here. And then you can say show tables. And in, and in the command line, you have to put the semicolon at the end, otherwise it'll show a little arrow. So if you get this happening where you see a bunch of little arrows, all you have to do is just hit semicolon and hit return and it'll go. Um, and yeah, so then you can, and then so show, you can show a lot of things, show database, show tables. Um, and then once you wanna see a specific table, you describe it, D-E-S-C, and then you just put the table name, so my colon, hit enter, and boom. You know, you can kind of see the, the schema. So I would say just play with a little bit of that thing and, you know, just do a, a comparison. Write your honest feelings. There's no right answer. Um, yeah, and just kind of get a feel for it. And when you're done in the terminal, you can just type exit, and it'll take you away. Um, yeah. Um, any questions? How did you get past the little keep on the command line? Mm -hmm. yeah, great question. Yep. I kind of just skipped right <laughs> past that and everyone always gets stuck there. Um, yeah. So you'll hit this point, right? Where it's saying yeah. enter password. Oh, yeah. And this is where you enter your password. Now, what hangs everyone up is that for security reasons, Terminals never show you the password when it prompts for them. Um, they, at least they shouldn't um, if the application is built right. And that's because all this is logged in clear text on your computer. Um, like I can go back in history and see all the commands that I ever ran on my terminal. Um, and so that's why it doesn't show it. So when I type this in, even though I'm typing, it's not going to change. It's not going to show little dots or anything like that. It just stays the same. So you just type in your password, you hit enter and it okay. goes. So yeah, it's not very intuitive. Um, but, but yeah, um, pretty common amongst terminals and like So when you're done, you can just hit type exit and it goes away on a Mac. You type it twice and it closes it for you. Great question. Thank you. Um, any others? Okay. And it's okay if you don't have any questions now. I, you know, it happens every time. Some will come up, like almost guaranteed. Um, so if you get those questions, feel free to ping me on Teams. Um, you know, throw them in the in the Teams chat. Um, 
you know, even for, if it's not like personal, like feel free to throw it out there and some other people can help answer, or it can just be a good example for other people who may stumble across the same thing. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, that's all I had for this week. Um, so yeah, hope you guys all have a great week. Hope everything goes well. If not, no stress. Um, like I said, this week is just all about just getting set up, getting in a groove. Um, so if you, if you hit any snacks, just, just let us know. Um, TA is here to help. I'm here to help. Um, usually there's always others in the class that are there to help as well. So, um, you know, don't stress, don't, I always tell people you're going to hit this point where you're banging your head against the wall. And I think there's learning to be done during those moments. But if you actually feel like you want to put your head through a wall, that's a good time to ask for help. Um, so don't do that. And just, you know, that's why teams are there. So anyways, um, yeah, um, this, these recordings, I guess just polish off these recordings. I post them on YouTube. Um, lately, the last couple of videos I've done, the AI is incredible and itself does chapters for me. Um, so anyways, I post it usually the same night that we record and then, you know, it takes a little bit for it to process, but then once it's up, it's, it's there. So I usually post a link to that recording, um, within a day or two, um, once it kind of finishes going through that whole process. So, um, if you want to come back and watch this, um, feel free, hope you do. Um, but yeah, otherwise hope you have a great week. If you need something, reach out. Otherwise we will talk next week. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep. Thank you all. Thank you.